So, uh, today's uh, Sergio Lopez Guerrero is going to speak about on the phenomenology of camera ray signal emitted from generic test processes. He's a PhD student in the Technician University of München. Um, okay, sir. Thank you very much. Everybody is listening to you. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Roberto, for giving me the opportunity to speak here. It's my first time in Valencia. And so far, what I've did a little seen, I like it a lot. So, yeah. Thank you very much for letting me be here. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about. Uh, yeah, uh, what, like Roberto said, uh, the phenomenology of uh, gamma ray phenomenology of uh, cascade processes of dark matter involving either annihilation or decay. That's for the camera. Okay. Uh, so my outline is going to be very, very straightforward. First of all, a little uh, reminder of about dark matter. Then I'm going to talk about uh, dark matter detection and specifically detection of gamma rays. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the, the cascade processes uh, and then some physical models in which you can actually see these, uh, these signatures. So, very briefly, dark matter, I don't want to spend too much time in here. So, we know already that uh, we have several different uh, hints for dark matter. Better said, we have some uh, anomalous gravitational behavior that we've seen uh, since 1933 and even before, <coughs> until the present. Uh, different uh, gravitational observations that uh, seem to have an anomalous gravitational uh, behavior. We also can order this in, in a scale, um, in different scales, which makes it even more uh, um, convincing that there's something that, uh, out there that we're not seeing, because we have either rotation curves or the velocity dispersion of the comma cluster that city saw first, or a bullet cluster, or even in the scales of, of the universe, in the CMB or structure formation, that uh, we have, we're seeing some more matter that we're actually uh, observing with, uh, uh, through light. So there's clearly something that we're not uh, seeing, and uh, this is usually solved in the Lambda CDM framework, with dark matter. We also have a huge amount of dark energy, I'm not going to get into it, but we're, uh, I think everybody's convinced that there is some kind of matter that we're not seeing, that does not uh, interact with light, does not interact with, with uh, virus, at least not in a direct uh, manner, and um, yeah, in actually we can say that in an astrophysical Come, uh, uh, from an astrophysical point of view, uh, dark matter has been discovered. So there is dark matter, we're not seeing it, and uh, we as, uh, as particle physicists we are trying to figure out what exactly is dark matter made of. So, in the Lambda CDM uh, framework we have not only dark matter, but we have cold dark matter cold because of a structure formation, so we have to have a non relativistic velocities at the time of structure formation. Then we have dark, so this means no color uh, or <coughs> electric charge. And matter, it's subject to gravity. Still out there, so it hasn't uh, decayed or annihilated today. So we have these three concepts and every uh, particle we want to, to postulate, it has to fulfill these three uh, requirements if we want to remain in the standard model of cosmology, which is the lambda CDM model. Uh, we have several um, candidates for this, not of all of them, of them fit in this cold dark matter framework, but most of them, and the most popular one uh, today are uh, <coughs> weakly interacting massive particles, or WIMPs, uh, which fulfill all of these uh, requirements that I said before, they fit wonderfully in the lambda CDM model, they also fit uh, a natural um, byproduct of several other Theories like uh, exclamations or uh, or Susy. So uh, actually, this is the most uh, explored candidate and a very well motivated candidate. So I'm going to focus from now on. Every time I said I talk about Wimps, yes. What's the gravitino? The gravitino is oh, gravitino. Gravitino. Gravitino on the right side. Gravitinos. Gravitinos. Okay, that's a typo, and I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So let's switch easily, uh, fast <laughs> um, um, Okay, back to the wimps. So I have a very nice
nice uh, feature about the wimps that they also produced as a as a thermal relic that it freezes out. So you have a huge amount of uh, wimps in the in primordial times, and then as the universe expands and cools off, uh, the process of dark matter to turn model particles, which was at some point in in equilibrium, uh, get, begins to go only in one direction, not in the other. So the, the the density of dark matter particles begins to drop, and the expand expansion of the universe compensates this, and then the particle freezes out, and uh, it, it remains as a thermal relic. And you can calculate then the cross section you, you would expect this process to 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 occur uh, when you impose again the lambda CDM framework that you would expect um, a, some, a certain density of uh, of dark matter. So uh, we know more or less how large this cross section of uh, annihilation uh, annihilating dark matter should occur. And we also know for certain if dark matter was to, is to be a thermal relic, then this channel has to be open. So there has to be some way in which dark matter interacts to external model particles. So, now that we have this ready, we can go on into dark matter detection. And there are uh, currently three different strategies. Uh, there's maybe a, a fourth, but three active a different strategy in which we're looking for dark matter. This is also the standard way of, of picturing it. Depending, we have this this interaction ensured from uh, from the wimp uh, from uh, implying that dark matter is a wimp. So this means we can read it this diagram in different or this cartoon better said in different directions. If we read an annihilation, then we can uh, have dark matter in detection in the terms of having annihilating dark matter into standard model particles. We can also generate this if we read this from right to left. And that's currently what people at Collators are, are trying to, to, to look for by producing dark matter. And we can read this also vertically. Uh, and this is a uh, scattering of dark matter with a standard model particle, so some nuclei. And this is direct detection. Uh, today I'm going to focus on the indirect detection. So we are looking at particles, precisely said. Uh, so the uh, last part of my talk, gamma rays, which we are trying to observe here at Earth, that come from dark matter indirect detection. So how does indirect detection work? It has a three step. First, we have the production. So dark matter emulates into either gauge bosons or the Higgs or perhaps directly into, into leptons or, or, or baryon field and then we have this uh, in situ production. Then we have to take, charge, uh, take care of the propagation. Unless the particle is uh, promptly emitted, uh, uh, the particle I mean a, a, a photon or a neutrino that travels without any kind of diffusion through the galaxy, we have to also take care of some kind of diffusion of uh, charged particles in the entangled uh, uh, fields that we have in the galaxy, also the interaction with starlight, also the interaction with the CMB. So there's uh, several things that uh, may happen to the particles in their way to the Earth that, okay, here I just depicted in this local area. And then it, okay, it arrives at Earth, and we have to look at it. Since it doesn't interact uh, neither uh, electrically or nor um, with a strong interaction, so we, there are several ways we can look for this. So that matter, of course not, sorry, but uh, we have this, this messengers, and we can to detect the messengers with different strategies, depending on the different detectors depending if it's neutrino, so ice cube, I haven't pictured it, but for example ice cube, or charged uh, cosmic rays with AMS, or gamma rays we have uh, magic, or, or Fermi, or, or HES. Uh, so, if we, cons uh, if we consider these three main groups, we have charged cosmic rays, for example antiprotons, positrons, antideuterons, uh, they have the, the disadvantage that you have to, to take care of the diffusion, and this brings a lot of uh, uncertainties. If you consider neutrinos, uh, the problem of neutrinos is the, the detectability. So it's not as easy to detect neutrinos as it is 
with identity protons. If you consider gamma rays, since dark matter doesn't interact directly with gamma rays, <coughs> these are always a suppressed channel. There has to be always some intermediate process, either a loop, or if you emit uh, charged cosmic rays, uh, that, and then they intern emit gamma rays, they have also this, this, this process involved. So it's not a direct channel. However, gamma rays, in contrast to these other two channels, they have the perks of ha uh, having no diffusion and of being easily detectable. So this is another reason why from now on I'm going to concentrate on dark matter injury detection using gamma rays. And okay, it's just some few words on the experiments I've uh, used on them. This is not all of them, there exist, there are several. Uh, but just to put into context, I've used, in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the following of the talk, I'm going <coughs> to uh, talk about data drawn by the Fermi telescope, which goes in, okay, uh, lower energies in this context, so either 0.1 to 300 GV. We have also the Hess telescope uh, in, South in, in Southern Africa uh, that goes to higher en energies and it complements actually quite nicely Fermi. And I've also uh, worked with the uh, concept of CTA, which is an extra generation uh, t uh, Cherenkov telescope of gamma rays and of course of, of, of charged particles. And as a broader band from 10 GB to 1000 TV. Since this experiment is not running yet, uh, you have to make some Monte Carlo simulations, you have to say what you expect, expect from this. There also, at the time what I, when I did this, uh, the, the simulations, so when we did in the collaboration, uh, so with my collaborators, uh, we didn't knew as much as we know today, 30th of, of November. Uh, so it's also uh, we could uh, do use even more data and make a perhaps a more uh, realistic simulation in what city is going to look like when they build it. So gamma rays, uh, if we consider diffuse emission, so not uh, promptly emitted gamma rays, we have uh, a diffuse emission of a multi wavelength photon. So we have a uh, emission of photons. Uh, in several wavelengths, that is either uh, produced after the dark matter annihilation via either inverse Compton or some uh, Bremsstrahlung, uh, and it emits a soft spectrum in many, many, uh, at many wavelengths. And the problem with this is that you have to struggle with an unknown background, which is actually a lot larger than the flux that we would expect from the emission of dark matter. So if we were to claim, or if, we were, if dark matter is, is to be seen through this channel, we have to make a lot of work and a lot of statistical analysis because we have a huge background which have to surpass with a, a soft spectrum. So this is for example if you say dark matter 150 GV, thermal, uh, standard thermal uh, cross-section 3 times 10 minus 26, and chi chi to pp bar, then it will produce this spectrum, and as you see, to see it actually, this is uh, data from Fermilla to see it here, it would take a lot of time to convincingly say, okay, dark matter, we've seen dark matter in this channel. <laughs> On the other hand, we have special features that may also be produced from dark matter annihilation, that in contrast to the diffuse emission, uh, the spectrum differs a lot from the standard power law that we expect from astrophysical sources. So this is a log scale, uh, uh, so this is a cartoon showing the backgrounds. We have a, a power law, standard power law background, and then if we had some spectral features with some hard spectrum, then it would be clearly a bump above this, this, this uh, power law background. So it would be easier to claim something with this strategy. Of course, we don't, we cannot be certain that dark matter emits this, but if dark matter is to emit this kind of features, then we, it would be easier to make a claim using this channel. Um, that's why uh, this, this uh, spiritual features are called, uh, are usually called this smoking guns, right? Because if we have the spectrum and we see a bump or we see something hard above this soft spectrum, then okay, this has to be dark matter because to date, we know of no uh, astrophysical sources of such very hard spectra. Uh, there are three different uh, kinds of 
spectra of, of spectral features that you can see. The most well known are the gamma ray lines, in the sense that they are produced is in a supersymmetric scenario that uh, a neutralino annihilates via loop, and there's always somewhat involved uh, to photons, and so uh, dark matter could emit gamma ray lines. You have to fight with the suppression, but in principle, you could emit these monochromatic photons. It would be emitted in the, with an energy equal to the mass of the dark matter particle in the standard scenario. You can also produce, produce some hard spectra with internal brain straddle in, uh, when you attach a photon leg to uh, an annihilating case of dark matter to some other standard model of fermions. Then uh, you may uh, produce this, this, emit this photon, and this photon, due to kinematical reasons, has a soft spectrum in the beginning, but then at the kinematical end of the, of the signal, it has also a, a, a bump. So this will produce also a, a, a feature, a hard spectrum. And then in the third case, you have gamma ray boxes and triangles, which are emitted in uh, two-step processes, cascade processes, uh, that are figured here. So you have dark matter relating into a, uh, an intermediate state on shell, so these particles are actually physically emitted. And then this particle emits after some uh, scale into photons. And if this is the case, then you automatically have some uh, hard spectrum, which I'm going to talk about uh, for the rest of the talk. But uh, before, I'm going to say just briefly two things regarding the other two uh, features, namely gamma ray lines and internal brain strategy features. For example, this is a gamma ray line that is produced very um, um, optimistically with this uh, standard cross-section. The problem is that, okay, here, this is a line produced with a cross-section 3 times 10 to minus 26. However, as you recall from the previous slide, you saw loop suppression. So this means that uh, in the best scenario, you have to fight with an alpha squared uh, suppression. So this means you would have more or less uh, 1 times 10 to minus 30 um, an effective uh, cross-section, which is uh, okay, um, very uh, much lower than, than than the one produced here. So you have to scale again this the signal down. So it's not as clear as you see here. So it's still you have to fight with a with a huge background. Uh, the, a similar kind of suppression you have in internal brain shrouding cases because you have since you have a two to three. Uh, annihilation. You have a, a phase space suppression and also uh, you have to attach the, the, the electromagnetic coupling uh, in contrast to the 2 to 2 cross section. So you would have again a, a similar suppression. However, in the case of gamma ray boxes, you don't have any of uh, these a priori suppressions. So, in a very good case, you would have no suppression at all. But it's also very optimistically, but there's no a priori suppression. So now I go to the main part of my talk, namely the gamma rays that are made from cascade processes. And I could talk about this actually a long time because the phenomenology that you have from cascade processes is huge. So I'm going to try to summarize it for the following 15-20 uh, minutes. Um, yeah. So, uh, how does this work? Uh, you have a one-step cascade process uh, in which you have a decaying uh, uh, annihilating dark matter, it works also for decaying dark matter, but I'm going to focus on them. Annihilating, and it annihilates into an intermediate state. First of all, there's nothing known about this intermediate state, I'm not saying anything. It decays just in an intermediate state. And then this intermediate state decays into at least one photon. So perhaps another particle, perhaps two photons, but let's say one photon. So you have the annihilation of the dark matter particle into two intermediate states, and then this uh, intermediate state decays into, let's say, a photon. In the, uh, in the rest frame of this particle, of course, the photon would be emitted more chromatically, which is given by um, this equation. And let's say if this particle x would be another photon, then it would be half of the dark matter mass. So here also you are getting an alpha square suppression, isn't it? Uh, in principle, no. Because this, uh, 
this is a process that you wouldn't get in suppression. You expect yes. here to have. But then phi goes to gamma. Uh, phi goes to gamma, but this doesn't suppress anything. The only thing that comes here in play is branching ratio phi into gamma. If phi would decay, would be to decay only in photons. Let's suppose like the pion, which decays 99% into into photons, they would have no suppression at all because then it decays into a pion, and the pion decays after some scale, the pion very, very shortly <coughs> into photons. Yeah, but if it's the Higgs, it's 10 minus 4. If the Higgs, exactly. So 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 in principle, uh, the branching ratio of this particle has a huge role. Is, 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 is the suppression. But in contrast to the, the other case, if you are uh, optimistic, you can say it's a particle like the pion or the pion. If it was the pion, you have to fight with other things. You would have a very large branching ratio and you have uh, a branching ratio of 100%. You can go, of course, there's no, no place in the bottom. You can go the Higgs 10 to the minus 3. Other models that we uh, consider were 10 to the minus 2, so you have a huge interplay. I'm going to talk about this uh, later on. Um, okay, so you have in the rest frame scenario, in the rest frame, in the rest frame, a monochromatic photon. However, uh, depending on the mass difference of this intermediate state and this intermediate state and the dark matter particle, this intermediate state would gain a momentum. So this means in the lab frame, which is the rest frame of uh, dark matter approximately, uh, the particle. Uh, would gain a momentum, this intermediate state. So we'd have a momentum, and then the energy of the photon would depend on the angle in which is emitted uh, between the emission, the emitted photon, and the uh, mo uh, direction of, of momentum of this intermediate state. So uh, you can get the, the energy of the photon given by this, in which the important part is this cosine here, so it goes around this angle. This means that the energy that this photon can get has a maximum and a minimum. <coughs> so uh, before the energy would be, in a, be emitted in an, an unresolved uh, case a delta function, and in this case you would have a maximum and a minimum. And all the bits between would be populated, but you would have a maximum bin and a minimum bin. Now I'm going to talk about uh, what happens if we uh, choose the pick the, 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 the nature of this intermediate state. So until, until now, uh, this happens regardless of the nature, of the particle nature of this intermediate state phi. Mm, and we have these two ends. So what happens in the middle depends on the nature of this particle. So we consider scalars of fermions. And the main difference is this. In fermions, specifically in Dirac, Dirac fermions, you have a preferred direction. So we have a spin, and this means that the particle in the rest frame has some arbitrarily chosen preferred direction. So there has to be some angular dependence. It could be zero in some uh, particle cases, but in principle you have some angular distribution of the oh sorry <coughs> of the um, of this emitted photon. And of course, if you have a fermion, the decay mode would be an intermediate fermion to another fermion in a photon. So we have a decay of uh, a photon and another particle, which also gives a lot of, of, of phenomenology to explore. In the case of scalars and also Majorana fermions, you have some isotropic decay. So this means that in this expression, alpha is zero. So you have an isotropic decay. So you, you have no perfect direction. And um, the decay modes could be either ZZ, and because of, 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 of uh, electrode unification, you have automatically also the uh, uh, gamma to Z uh, decay mode, so phi to gamma gamma or phi to gamma Z. Uh, what happens in the one step case case with scalars? This is the most easier case, we have isotropic decay, so this means, again this is a cartoon that explains it, we have the intermediate state going with a momentum in one direction, and then it emits a photon. Let's say it emits in the forward direction, so this is the maximum energy this photon can get, so it's emitted at the kinematical end to the right, so a maximal energy. On the contrast, if we emit it in the backwards direction, we get a minimum energy. So then the rest, as I said before, is populated in here, and since in the scalar case the decay is isotropic, this means that all of the angles in between are equally uh, um, possible. So this means that all, all the, 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 this direction
regions would be populated, all of this energy beams are equally populated, this would get you this box-shaped spectrum. Right? So if you emit, then you have a, a, a case in which you produce this box-shaped spectrum. However, in the case if you have a fermion, you will have a preferred direction. Let's assume this preferred direction is forward, so you prefer to send your 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 photons forward. So this means you would have at the kinematical end a, a lot a huge amount of, of, of photons, and then as you go into uh, wider and wider angles, the population of each of these pins gets smaller and smaller, and then the least preferred direction gets the smallest populated pin. And this will produce this kind of slope, and then it looks like a triangle. Then I said before, it depends of course if, which is your preferred direction. If your preferred direction was forward, you get something like this. And then this preferred direction is uh, mirrored in this parameter alpha. Depending on the parameter alpha, you can uh, play with the slope. So you have the case in the forward direction, the opposite case, the, the other extreme case, is where the, your preferred direction is backward direction and then if the preferred direction is backward direction you have the, this energy being the more uh, populated one and then it drops. This would look uh, again like a soft spectrum but this is just a linear plot so this means this is a, a linear fall, uh, fall whereas the, the, the astrophysical background are a power law e to the minus 2.7 more or less so this is still a harder <coughs> spectrum than the one that you expect from your astrophysical background. So this is still a spectral feature. Uh, so regardless of what the nature of this alpha, so the word preferred direction is, what the uh, specific particle mo model is underlying, you would have something that would be visible as a, as, as, um, as, a, as, a, as a spectral feature. So what happens now? We could get to play with the parameters, the mass of the intermediate state, the mass of the end state, and so on. And here, uh, for example, you get if the um, if the intermediate state has a mass which is very near the dark matter mass, this means that after annihilation, this intermediate state would be emitted with a very small momentum. This means that the, uh, the, 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 the energy that the photon, the emitted photon, would gain or lose is not that, that large. So you would get a very narrow box, and if you consider some resolution, you would get a line like spectrum, which could be indistinguishable from. Any, uh, from a gamma ray line. So this means that all of the work that has been done on lines can be directly um, translated to a scenario with narrow boxes. Whereas the larger, the, the smaller and smaller the, the mass of the intermediate state gets, you would get uh, the, the kinematical lines even wider and wider, and then you could get an intermediate box or a wide box, as we call them. So in this, this, the, the width of the signal uh, relates to the mass uh, ratio mass difference, so the, the ratio of the masses of intermediate state and intermediate scalar, scalar in this case, and the uh, parent dark matter particle. Uh, if you have triangles, you have, of course, the same thing. You have wider triangles, you have narrower triangles, and again, if you get a case where the width is narrower, uh, much narrower than the case of a line, you cannot distinguish it from a line. Uh, and also you have, as I said before, you have a different slopes. So you can hold, go up going slope, down going slopes. And in the case of, I picture it in the in, in, uh, fermions, but it happens also if you have a decay mode in the scalar case, gamma z. Uh, depending on the, uh, on the mass ratio, mass relation between the intermediate state and this end state, in the case of a fermion, uh, let's say a neutrino, in the case of, of, um, of a scalar, the, the mass of the of the, uh, of the set boson, you would then uh, get a signal at lower energies. This is a directly, uh, um, um, this follows directly from the from kinematical um, uh, considerations, and this means this has a nice feature that you could have, for example, in this case, a dark matter particle which weighs about, in this case, 10 TV and you would get a signal at GV or even lower. So the lower, lower end is, is, is not close, it depends only on the relation of the mass of the two, the final state particle and the intermediate state particle. 
and this means you could get a very low energy signal coming from very heavy dark matter. This is coming? Sorry? The gammas are coming from uh, decay or annihilation? Uh, the gammas come directly from a decay. So the decay of an intermediate state. Uh, so of course, in the model that you're considering, you have to ensure uh, a, a decay of intermediate state into at least one gamma. But uh, dark matter decay, so it's a very late decay. No, so it's dark matter annihilates into some intermediate particle, physically. So this, you have this uh, intermediate particle, let's say the Higgs, and then the Higgs decays into photons with uh, okay, some okay, okay. branching relation. Uh, and now, uh, of course, this doesn't work if you cannot think of a, of a physical model that produces it. And I'm going to then um, talk briefly about the models of physical realization so we, can, we, can, uh, we can construct. Uh, models for boxes, meaning models when you have an intermediate scalar. Uh, the, we have found several and we have worked on uh, with different, for example, a model which you have just a uh, Dirac fermion. And then you have, uh, the, all these models always involve an extra U1 symmetry using the Pitcher Queen mechanism, just uh, as a small digression, it has nothing to do with the Q QCD um, axions or nothing, this is just calling the same mechanism to dark matter. And then uh, through this mechanism you get a scalar and a pseudoscalar. Pseudoscalar works as the same as a scalar in, um, in from the kinematical observations. And then this uh, you have three decay modes: uh, dark matter to pseudoscalar and scalar, two pseudoscalars or two scalars. And then in this model you get a decay of this pseudoscalar into two gammas with a branch ratio of 20% to 100%, which is again very optimistic, but it's possible. What are these guys, this scalar or pseudo-scalar? Can you give an example, a model that gives this? Yeah, so this model that we, we constructed, this is a model that we constructed in which uh, if you add one extra symmetry, one PGQ symmetry, then you get these pseudo-scalars as, as gold symbols, bosons, just like the PGQ mechanism works. Another, another model which uses the same is a model uh, that was constructed by these people in which they were trying to explain the positron excess and in this model that they have, they also add the similar mechanism in which uh, dark matter is a direct fermion, which emits uh, dominantly, dominantly into a pseudoscalar and scalar, a very small branching ratio, but they also had a very uh, large boost factor with some of and they produce also boxes. So in, in yes? Uh, in this case, so the branching area of the, of, of, of the, uh, of the pseudoscalar into gammas was, give, uh, was in, in using uh, anomalies. So you have the KV and anomaly. This is constructed analogously to the Yes, exactly. But uh, it is very obscure. What is the model? I mean, what is the model? What are the doublets? What are the assignments? All of the physicists. Sorry? All of the Yeah. But what do you do? You get a standard model and you want something. What do you want? Singlets? Okay, I, I, I don't have the, 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 the here I, I, for, for this. Uh, I didn't make uh, I understand that this is, everything is additional to the standard model. One Dirac fermion, one scalar, one pseudo scalar. All three particles are singlets on the standard model. Yes. I'm, 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 I'm not but getting. not coupled to anything? I'm not getting into detail into the models. I just wanted to, to, to mention the models. Of course, I, I could talk. On the, I'm, I'm focused on the phenomenological part. Just we so could, you don't understand. No, no, no. In, in the paper, we wrote the Lagrangian, we, we computed the loops, we computed the diagrams, and everything. Uh, for example, for, 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 for the case of, of triangles, I have here a preliminary Lagrangian that we wrote with the particles. So we added uh, uh, five particles and, and, uh, and extra doublets uh, and, and, and so on, here with a set of symmetry for, for, for ensuring the, 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 the decay. Uh, for, for, for the stability of dark matter, this is the Lagrangian, so if you want, we can discuss also. So the extra fermion in the system looks like a right hand in the neutrino. Yes, yes, this one. Just a right this so one is a right hand neutrino, and this one is an extra neutrino. sterile neutrino. This is a sterile neutrino. But I, I thought that fermion is the dark matter, and from the set 2 assignment, it seems it's the chi which is the dark matter. 
yes, sorry, yes, sorry, sorry. Uh, Black matter is chi. This is the intermediate Black state, and, and these are extra particles that we need for the for the whole decay, for the whole for everything to work. This is the dark matter. And S is a singlet, is a feminine. S is a scalar. scalar. This is uh, oh, sorry, uh, sorry. Scalar. Yeah, I see. The real scalar, not the complex scalar. A real scalar, yes. No. Yes, a real scalar, of course, it doesn't charge by my body. It's a real scalar. Um, uh, in this case, there's another uh, issue you have to consider. Is that uh, um, so in, 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 in this scenario, uh, you have to have a kind of projection in here because you have to ensure that the emitted intermediate states in this model, the intermediate states are this uh, sterile neutrinos. These have to be emitted in, one, in, in, in all the processes with the same chirality, so that the, the direction was the same and the preferred direction of all the, 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 the decays is the same. Because in the other case, you would have different chiralities, and these chiralities would emit, as I showed uh, before, forward photons, backward photons, everything is populated, and the, and the signal, the net signal you would get here, um, would be again boxes, which is still a spectral feature, but you wouldn't see triangles. However, you consider an asymmetric dark matter scenario. And this is again just a, a very small comment. If you consider it as an asymmetric dark matter model, uh, and you, uh, you can produce them with, a, a, for example, with a U1 symmetry with a sign with a lepton charge, so you can treat the symmetry, you can uh, produce uh, only uh, sterile neutrinos with one specific chirality, and then this means that you would emit in the end photos only in one direction or only in the other direction. This is just only to ensure that you have indeed, you see here the, 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 this triangle uh, spectrum. And the nice thing, uh, thing of this is that, okay, it goes in that direction. If you see, at least, uh, uh, if you the study, if you would see a triangle in your dark matter, in, in, in your data, this would mean immediately that uh, you would have an asymmetric dark matter scenario. Um, Sorry, can, can you get rid of the left hand and the and that's what with the right-handed ones? Uh, if you get rid of the right-handed, of the stereo neutrino. Of the left-handed part. So you just make it uh, right-handed, like a typical right-handed neutrino. Uh, we, then you can I'm not sure. So, 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 so. Maybe yes. I mean, that uh, way you break the equal chirality that you, you yes. I uh, Let me think here very quickly. I don't... I mean, you would have to give a mass, a Majorana mass to this guy, mm -hmm. because otherwise it would be massless. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it would be Dirac, no? With the maybe, maybe yes. That so, way. but this model was actually constructed more and more, and let's say, in a toyish way. So we're trying to just construct some kind of physical model that produces. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you could produce, if you can play with another model that produces this. Sure. Then, then of course, mm -hmm. perfect. Okay. No, you can go. You can go. To the complexity of, of a model is not close. You can go to, to huge complexities in if they produce. Sorry. Okay. The N D is the Dirac neutrino is right right hand. N D is a Dirac neutrino. It's a sterile Dirac neutrino. It's vector like left and right. Vector like. But how do the neutrinos get mass in this case? The normal neutrinos. The neutrinos. Yeah. Uh, Cesium mechanism. So you have a, a right hand. How 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 does it work? Um, there is a name. And you would need to add a Majorana mass. Okay. Hmm? It can be, be uh, because of those lambdas that you get in the. Uh, Maybe I'm wrong. Those give the rack mass to the neutrinos. I'm, I, to be completely honest, I didn't uh, work deeply in the model, so the model was built for by a collaborator of mine. So I'm not sure of all the of all the, of all the, of the, the small uh, stuff of this. I guess also the, I guess the scope of this model was not to work on the mass of the neutrinos, was just to work on yes, the exactly. So the, again, this model was not constructed in the spirit of explaining everything. It was just uh, uh, in in the spirit of showing that there is a possibility of a model that would emit uh, triangles. So we're not you were not trying to to, to make a, a, a realistic, physically realistic, one hundred percent. A, a true model to, to, to nature. Like I said before, this is most a, 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 a toy model that 
would go perhaps one step in between a, a toy model in its essence and a model, a physical model in its essence. Uh, and then very briefly I want to compare with experimental data. Uh, so uh, what we did is just we draw limits using this, this, this method on, on possible models. Uh, we performed a side window, a proper likelihood analysis, and for the uh, for for CTA we, we produced some mod data, and we used the different kind of data using data existing data from Hess and Fermi, and and, and model data from 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 CTA. And I don't want to get into it with this. I want just a summary, for example, of all the uh, of all the um, of, of of the limits that we get. In here we're considering. A branching ratio of the intermediate state into photons of 100%. And of course, if you would get a different branching ratio, the only thing you have to do is to scale this. If you had an, an, an enhancement, a boost factor, you scale this down, right? So you have, depending on the precise model that you have in place, this is a rather uh, model independent approach. This is just for, uh, for, for lines. So what happens if you had uh, um, very narrow boxes or very narrow triangles? And uh, this, the data from Hess and Fermi Lad are data that they drawn separately. The only thing that we did, as I said before, is that you can translate all the, the, the analysis that has done, phenomenological analysis that has been done, into lines to narrow triangles. And these two lines represent the limits that we drawn for uh, some uh, Monte Carlo simulation on CTA. Um, and okay, just to explain, these two different lines are because when we worked on this, we had this line, and then two weeks after we submitted the paper to the archive and to, to, to the journal, the CTA released any newer uh, information on the, on, on the experiment, and so we had to do update it for, for, the new, uh, for the new performance on CTA that was released. Uh, and leave you with uh, my conclusions. Thank you. Questions, comments? I don't know, I mean, in the, in when you present the previous model, the one like, two was slides before, uh, in this case, you no, the this one after that. This? Yeah. In that case, you have the triangle only because the neutrinos are kind of massless. Because you need photon, photon, neutrino, neutrino, but are. In fact you have only white triangles. Only white triangles, because the neutrino is massless, yes. So, so in okay. principle, you can have kind of. Heavier state, and then you're trying to If you exactly again, if you would uh, construct a more complex model with not a, the final state not being a standard model neutrino, but perhaps another neutrino and uh, a heavier neutrino, uh, perhaps it could be also another like another state. Yeah, exactly. Then you would have narrower triangles. Yes, but th th this th 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 this depends goes only as far as the complexity of the model is allowed to go, which is as complex as you wanted to get, but I don't know, in, in this case we try to, to, to remain as, 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 as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Please. Yes, usually with gamma ray lines you can try to have uh, cross sections as large as the thermal one by using tricks, no? Like, uh, okay, uh, some kind of exactly. things like that. Or, or some structures, boost factors. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Could you use that uh, here as well to get a cross section for boxes which is larger than the thermal one? Yes, yes. Actually, in, in this model, which produces boxes, they had ah, yes. a summer fed enhancement. Mm -hmm. And it also translates also to, to a larger. In this case, it was quite nice because we had a very sl uh, low branch duration to ah, photons, yes. but a huge enhancement. Okay, so you can compensate the branching ratio. You can compensate, like exactly. And substructures, of course, substructure is astrophysical, it's not model dependent. Okay. More questions? I mean, in these models, in all, both of these mm -hmm. models, your scalar also mixes with the Higgs. I mean, because. Uh, they, they, they both control. mix with the Higgs. In this model, we just. For, 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 to, to spare the analysis on the charge cosmic rays, we put the, ang the mixing angle to, to zero. Mm -hmm. But of course, you should open it. And then you have to, to explore what happens if we emit uh, leptons. There are other from the visible. Exactly. The exactly. And in this case, uh, they had also, I think they are also mixing. But this, case, this, this model was a lot more complex. And they observed more. I think this model actually did uh, 
take a look into the mixing and this model ensured that this mixing didn't produce didn't overproduce uh cusper press. Mm -hmm. Now, in the, in the sense, because since you are starting with two fermion, uh, Dirac fermions as dark matter candidate, mm -hmm. also you could construct a model with uh, Majorana fermions. In the sense, you could have the, I was thinking just if it is possible to construct the same triangle, but instead in the final state to have the two five, in the case of fermions, mm -hmm. since you have this mm -hmm. Majorana mass suppression, you could have also an internal predestralum plus the two intermediate state, because the poly is kinematically allowed. And be stronger than the other case, no? With the, you mean Majorana in, in, in the intermediate stage? No, Majorana in the initial stage. So that means that you have a suppression with the mass of the mm -hmm. final stage, but if you have an internal pressure from the propagator or whatever that is in the middle, you could have a, like a triangle plus, plus internal pressure. I don't know. It was well, you would have, first you would have a box, because if you have Majorana dark matter, then this means that a chirality of, of the intermediate states can be both. So you would have triangles that would add themselves to a box, but uh, in principle, yes, you could have. Actually, the, uh, this, uh, no, the, the box models were always considered fermion, but in the first time we, 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 we looked at this, we had actually a, a very, very uh, a simple model that produced with Majorana Dark Matter mm -hmm. boxes, but yeah, with Majorana. Okay, more questions? If not, we thank Sergio. Thank you.